Welcome everybody to the open source computer aided modeling and design dev room and the KiCad project status talk. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Wayne Stamball. I've been the KiCad project leader for now for about eight years. So let's get to it. I'll try to get through this quick so we leave some time for a Q&A at the end. So what's been going on with the KiCad project? Uh, one of the things, I got a little flack last year about my uh, talk. It turned out that that talk ended up being a bit more prophetic than I had intended it to be. Um, given the uh, COVID issues and the shortage of ventilators, uh, a, the open ventilator project was started early in two, uh, 2020. Um, KiCad drove that, and I think it really shows the power of open uh, hardware design and how open software will drive that and allow that to happen. If I don't want to talk about it too much, but if you get a chance, go take a look at it. It's really impressive what was done in a very short amount of time. Um, so onward with what's going, been going on in the KiCad project. Uh, what most people I'm sure are interested in, version six uh, was feature freeze, happened on October 1st. So the goal is to get version six stable release plan for the end of Q1. I don't know if that's ha gonna happen. We were hoping to have uh, RC1 out by now. We've had a few setbacks, so that may get pushed back to end of Q2, but it should be close to that time frame. We've released the 5.1.9, the ninth version of the 5.1 stable series on December 28th. We initiated a funding campaign from December 15th to January 15th of this year um, that resulted in more than $14,000 of donations. Along with that came a dollar match guarantee up to 10K. So the KiCad Services Corporation kicked in an additional $10,000, bringing the grand total to just over $24,000. So thank you to everyone who donated to that. Um, all the project repositories have now been moved to GitLab. So the libraries, the website, um, all the build stuff is now on GitLab. So the entire project's in one single place. We also had uh, two new de developers promoted to the lead development team. Um, one thing that was a pleasant surprise last year was there was a big uptick in new developer contributions. Um, so that looks good. The project seems to be very healthy in terms of uh, contributors. We moved the translation to Weblate for, to give more people an opportunity to provide translations. It's a little less technical and a little bit easier for users to contribute. So we've seen a nice bump in the translations. Uh, one thing that you will notice if you've been playing around with the uh, nightly builds is the graphical, all of the user interface icons have uh, changed. So we hired a, a graphics designer to create a new theme. Um, love it or hate it, it, it's at least it's consistent now. And out of that grew a, a policy to ensure that any new bitmaps that are added will stay consistent with the theme. So hopefully that improves KiCad's consistency, um, which is one of the things that many users have complained about. KeyCon 2021 is planned for September at CERN. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to have it this uh, in 2020 due to COVID. So the plan is to return to CERN live um, we still have, we don't have a date set for that yet, but I expect within the coming months, you'll see more information about that. So what's new with version six? Uh, keep in mind, this is not a complete, uh, change set. It's just the large user facing changes that you'll notice. There's hundreds of other smaller changes that are every bit as significant but aren't on this list. There's also a few 
that didn't make the feature freeze, which may happen between now and release time. So I didn't put those on either in case they, in case that changes. So we obviously, we have a new theme and that helped. We also did a good job of uh, improving the uh, user interface coherence for the whole, all of the windows and dialogues and the user, user interface. Um, we switched the configuration file format to JSON. Uh, gives us a little bit more flexibility. We also broke a lot of the configuration files from their previous. Um, we used to have lots of stuff stored in small, bigger files. We now broke it down into smaller files for uh, project portability. Um, we now support multiple version configurations. So when you run version six for the first time, you'll be asked if you want to support multiple versions. And so you can keep an old version of KeyCat around with its own set of configurations. Um, if you're not comfortable migrating to the, the new version just yet. Um, we've completely removed the legacy canvas that's gone. Um, we now support custom color themes, so all of the editors have separate color themes, which can be, and they're maintained in a separate config file so that you can have per project themes if you prefer, or you can move them from uh, machine to machine fairly easy. We also added uh, info bar support. Um, one of the things we like, we try to do is reduce the number of modal information dialogues that require you to stop and move to the next uh, thing. So that I think a lot of people will find that happy. We also added the global variable text expansion. So most text objects now export um, variable expansion. So the project manager re received a few changes. There's now a project archive utility. Uh, Cat star projects are imported like Eagle projects. Uh, the project file format also was changed to JSON. Um, symbol and library editors are now usable with no project loaded, so you can edit your global symbol and footprint library editors without having a project open. Um, the project tree view files now are moved to trash instead of a straight delete. It's a little, give, give a users a little bit more safety. And there's a save as function now that you can save a whole project to a different, a new name, to a new project name. The schematic editor, the new file formats for the schematic and library symbols uh, has been completed. Uh, library symbols are now embedded in the schematic file, so that means you no longer have to take the symbol libraries with you to make sure that you don't lose um, your connectivity information. So that's a big plus. We fully support copy and Paste now with the clipboard. That's that's a real nice feature instead of the old copy and paste that we had before. Lines, wires, and bus color width and styles can be individually changed. So not only do you have a custom color theme, but you can change your all those features uh, individually as well. The same holds true for the junction colors and the diameters. So you can have an individual. Uh, junction color and diameter if you're trying to call out attention to something on a schematic. We now have user-defined page numbering, so any valid string you can use to as a page number. We also added back annotation from the board, so if you change a footprint or a, a reference designator on the on a footprint on the board, you can push those changes back to the schematic editor and then save them. There's been lots of wire and drawing, wire drawing tool improvements. Um, custom color themes also supported by the schematic editor as well. <clears throat> There's been a significant improvement in the bus definitions. There's uh, also an unfolding tool that allows you to expand buses. Um, it's a real handy tool when you have large complex buses. There's also some background bus connectivity testing that um, 
is really handy in version 6, which doesn't exist in 5.1. Along with that came a bunch of uh, electronic rules checking improvements. There's also a <clears throat> object property editing tool similar to what we have in the um, the board editor uh, allows you to change project or object properties like text size across multiple objects. It's not quite as nice as what we had hoped to get with the object inspector, but that didn't make it into version six. The uh, hierarchy the navigation tool can stay open now while you're editing, so it's easier for you to move from sheet to sheet. We also add a inner sheet references. These are sort of like hyperlinks to um, other sheets from the current sheet that you're working in. So we made, there's a lot of changes to the new symbol library editor as well. Um, there's obviously the new symbol file library format came along with the schematic file format. We improved the inheritance model from the old uh, the old model. Now you can derive objects from a base symbol and change all the fields or add additional fields that weren't in the base field. Um, there's now support for alternate pin definitions. So if you do a lot of design with microcontrollers where a pin can have four or five different functions. You can now support that with the, in the symbol editor and the schematics as well. There's a, a conversion tool. So if you want to convert your legacy libraries over to the new file format, there's kind of a one click tool to do that and it will update your library tables accordingly. Um, legacy libraries are no longer saveable. They're read only now from here out. So You'll be able to use them as is, but you won't be able to take advantage of any of the new features in legacy libraries. We now have cut, copy, and paste uh, symbols between libraries. We also support cut, copy, and paste graphical items between symbols or in the same symbol. So the clipboard support for the symbol library editor has been significantly improved. We've also added flags for bill material and board only symbols. So you can determine whether a a symbol shows up in the bill of materials or on the on the board exported to the board net list or only shows up in the schematic itself. So what about the board editor? Um, the board editor received a new appearance panel um, that along with the appearance panel comes um, selection filtering, which allows you to turn on and off different objects so when you do block select that you can ignore them or not. Um, the appearance panel also provides uh, you can set up custom views so if you have different visibilities uh, layer visibility layer etc for a view you can change your create your own views instead of the old fixed views that were um, in 5.1. We now have selection grouping so you can group objects by name. Um, we didn't get done the grouping between the schematic editor and the board editor. So right now that's primarily just for the board editor. Hopefully that'll happen in version seven. One thing that was not on the original version six uh, roadmap was um, custom design strengths and a rules editor. Um, we now have logic-based design rules. It's a, a, a somewhat like a programming language. Most other major uh, design tools already have similar, similar things in their products. So we now have it as part of KiCad. So that was an unexpected uh, new feature that happened for version six. Um, the design rule files are now, the design rules are now saved in their own file so that you can export them to other projects instead of being embedded in the board makes them a little bit more usable for projects uh, and other projects along with the new design rules came a whole slew of design rule check improvements you can now set the uh, uh, severity of uh, design rule errors 
and you can completely ignore them if you so choose. We made some major improvements to the DXF import and export uh, utilities. We added some additional dimensioning tools. So there's, uh, that's a big, that was a big plus. We now have a full layer stack manager, which allows you to include things like uh, thicknesses, layer thicknesses, um, impedance matching. These are all definable and can be exported to the Gerber X2 file formats if you when you export your Gerbers for manufacturing. Um, we added 13 new user defined layers, uh, so that's that's new. And now all of the layers can be renamed. Uh, previous to version six, only copper, copper layer names could be removed. We added support for curved tracks. So for those of you who are doing RF and don't want segmented uh, tracks, we now have true curve support in, key, in the uh, board editor. There's been a whole host of push and shove router refinements that make the behavior a little bit more predictable. Um, which is nice. The We've added an option to the rat's nester to allow you to have curved rat's nest instead of straight rat's nest. So in high density designs, the curves are a little easier to see where the rats begin and end. We also now have net coloring as well. So you can make rat, each rat a different color if you prefer or you can change the default color if that's what you like. Um, we now import S, uh, have import for SVG files. Uh, we added uh, thermal relief for custom pads. Uh, you had to do that manually in previous versions of KiCad. Uh, we also now allow arcs and polygons on non-copper layers. Uh, so hatch zone support is new. We have uh, a whole bunch of, uh, that was a feature request that's been a long time coming. Um, we also have multi-layer zones, so you can draw a single zone and put it on multiple layers instead of having to draw each one individually. Uh, we now support uh, castellated edge connections on the uh, board edges. Uh, you can drag footprint and keep the traces connected Although the design, it doesn't maintain design rules, so that's not fully fleshed out yet. It's a decent first step. Um, you can add opacity to the 3D models, so it allows you to look through the models and see the board on the 3D when you're looking at 3D views. Um, once again, we, we really made some significant improvements to the default color scheme so that you can leave all the color all your layers enabled and with and still have really reasonably good visibility. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can now back annotate from the board to the schematic. And along with that came a geographical annotation feature, which allows you to change all your reference designators by geographical location. So that's pretty nice if that's something you're interested in. We've also picked up Altium and uh, Fabmaster which is ORCAD ASCII board importers. Um, those are big, important features. A lot of customers been asking for those. Um, we didn't quite get the schematic support for those in, but at least the board support is solid. So the footprint editor also got the new appearance manager. Obviously along with that came object selection filtering and custom layer visibility presets. Uh, there are some big improvements made to object snapping, which makes it easier to align things in, when you're drawing uh, footprints. You can now add, a, add a, a rules or what are known as keep out areas in footprints. You can also add edge cuts to footprints, which get combined with the uh, edge cuts in the board to create a, a full outline. Um, we have chamfered rectangular pad support was added. We also added um, a custom set chamfered and rounded rectangle pads, which means you can 
basically set the chamfer or rounding on each corner individually. It's a easier, it's a way to prevent the need to have to do full custom uh, pads if that's something you need. So that was by no means the uh, um, all of version six, but that was those were the most of the big um, things in version six. So as of now, the version seven roadmap is still in flux and it's still being fleshed out. So things on this list may or may not change between now and when we start version start working on version seven. But these are the the things that we'd like to see happen for version seven. So uh, we'd like to see Altium library support. Right now, we just import the um, the uh, board. There is schematic support, but it's still a work in progress. And whether that makes it into V6 or not remains to be seen. Uh, well, there's been a lot of people have requested database-driven atomic library, so we'd like to do something like that, um, have that for V7. We are now to a point, we have so many libra our libraries support is quite good, but the problem is we have so many footprint and symbol libraries that running them in the foreground takes quite a while, and it's so we need to consider background loading them on startup. So that's something we want to add for V7. We'd like to improve our ping exports for third party tool chains for things like uh, visual diffing, visual differencing tools. Um, we also want to provide a, an output automation tool that will allow a, a, all, all build outputs or all manufacturing outputs to be created in a one time. Um, that's something that's been requested for a long time. Uh, we'd like to consolidate our overlay widgets into a single system. Right now we have several individual uh, overlay widgets that allow you to see things like dimensions while you're drawing. Um, we need to improve that. Uh, we want to allow keyboard access to all tools via an overlay UI widget. One of the problems is, is that KiCad's getting complex enough now that we're running out of hotkeys. So we need a way to chain hot key, chain key, keystrokes together to allow us to access all tools with by a keyboard. Um, one of the things we also would like to do is add a BGFX graphic ab abstraction layer. This would give us direct support for um, metal on Mac OS and um, use the native Windows uh, graphics layers instead of always using OpenGL. Um, we'd like to provide a custom tooltip widget to uh, that will allow improved rich, rich contextual help instead of just the simple tooltips. Um, we want to embed the worksheet into the schematic and board files instead of being externally linked. This should clean up things as far as portability. Um, we want to improve the grouping support between both editors so that we can do things like create what are called rooms in Altium. Um, you can group things together so that you can make cop duplicate copies of schematic groups and related board groups. Um, we would like to allow multiple boards per schematic. Right now, KiCad is limited to a single board per schematic. So we want to allow the grouping to support multiple boards so you can lay out multi-board designs in using a single project. Initially, We'd like to create a multiple document interface that supports having more than one pro project open at a time. Whether we can support multiple boards and schematics at the same time in a single project, that may or may not happen. But at the very least, we'd like to do multiple projects. We would like to get rid of the standalone uh, um, 
schematic and board editors and just have a single binary and just emulate the standalone mode. Uh, it causes us some issues and some additional code complexity. So I think that's something we're going to try to do. We'd also like to have a true net tie implementation from schematic through to board. Right now we have some crude hacks in there that we use to emulate net ties, but it's not a complete solution. Um, one thing we do want to get done is the uh, object properties editor. Um, so that's didn't make it into V6. Also pin and gate swapping, which we were hoping would make it into V6 also needs to be done is on the v version seven roadmap. As far as the schematic editor, we want to unify the symbols browser or symbol viewer in the footprint assignment tool so we can have a single um, symbol tool instead of having three tools that do very similar things. Um, the the object inspector, hopefully that will happen too. We want to be able to we want to allow editing power symbols and schematics so that for custom voltage buses, you don't have to create a new power symbol. Um, we have a lot of visual enhancements for graphical and text objects we'd like to make. Uh, we want to support um, non-hierarchical multiple sheet schematics. In other words, it's a flat schematic with mul from multiple files so that you don't have to use sheets. Uh, there's a whole bunch of splice simu simulator improvements we want to make. Um, the Eagle importer doesn't quite yet support hierarchical sheets, so that needs to be fixed. Um, we want to finish the complete inheritance model so that you can do more complex inheritance. Right now, it's just a simple model that allows for field changes. Uh, we want to add stack symbol pins for uh, a, uh, a large ASICs and micros that have lots of ground and power pins. So you only have to add a single pin and then they get broken out for the footprint. Um, uh, actually, the, <laughs> the, the symbol alternate pin definition was actually made it into version six. So that's actually done. So for the upcoming changes of the board editor, um, we want to use CERT. We want to use the new design rule engine for uh, fine searching on real complex design. The current searching tool is, uh, is a little weak. We want to have a push and shove footprint placement tool so that you can move footprints around just by picking up a footprint and pushing the other ones out of the way. Uh, we want to have uh, multi-grid support. We want to support local and prioritize Cartesian and polar grids for improved snapping and placement. Uh, pad and via stacks are definitely going to happen for version 7. This is kind of a must for uh, importing other projects. Uh, we like to we want to add a zone manager rather than having to manage each zone individually. We would like to have a top level zone tool that allows you to see the priority and manage all zones in one place. Uh, automatic neck down feature for the push and shove router for uh, high density BGA layout. Um, we want to change the file, footprint file format to add allow multiple footprints in a single library and also with compression. We want to create a board outline, a true board outline object that would allow us to define more accurately define holes and board out cutouts and board outlines. We'd also like to add a stack up support so that we can do things like uh, milling for uh, flex circuits. Uh, we don't currently support that yet. Uh, right now we have a unidirectional 3D viewer cross probing. We'd like to make that bi-directional. We'd like to have a real implementation for guard ring zones and tracks. I'd like to have in, uh, a granular locking feature so we can do things like, you know, lock move. You know, right now our locking's pretty coarse, so we would like to do that selection locking, etc. Uh, we'd like to improve the push and shove router to handle multiple net bus routing um, with via placement modes. 
<clears throat> we want to we need to overhaul the 3D model library lookup to use a table based system similar to the other uh, libraries. Um, uh, we want to we need a BGA fan out tool which will go along with the uh, the breakout tool. Uh, IPC 2581 support is scheduled to make it into 7.1. And that's uh, that's it for uh, most everything. Uh, as always, I, I like to say thanks to all the developers who contribute their valuable time and talent to the KiCad project. Um, thanks to them, it, KiCad happens. It's a lot of, it takes a lot of people to make it make KiCad the project it is. <clears throat> I'd also like to thank all of our sponsors and everyone who has generously donated to KiCad. Uh, I think the, the, the do donations keep going up every year, and I think that's a testament to the strength of the project. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your interest and continued support of the KiCad project. Uh, I'd like to make a special thanks to Seth Hillbrand, who volunteered to be the dev room lead. Uh, it's a lot of work in the background to make this happen, whether it's live or virtual. So thanks to Seth and hope to see everyone live at KeyCon 2021 because hopefully this will be my last virtual talk ever. <laughs> I Hopefully the rest of them are all live. Uh, thank you for attending my talk and talk to you at the uh, quiet Q&A. here on the uh, on the number of features that KiCad 6 is uh, is bringing into our ecosystem so uh, maybe can you just describe what what was the one that you are most excited about the users uh, having access to in KiCad 6 oh man there's so many good changes I, I just think the uh, I think the overall polish of the UI it's probably going to be one of the most noticeable things for users. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of new features, but I, even the features that you know already existed in 5.1, uh, just the how how much uh, better the usability is. I think I think that you know just the whole you know the new the new icon set, just the overall look and feel of KeyCad's a lot more polished and refined. I mean, it's not like there won't be weak spots there. As any open source project, there's always going to be places that the corners of KiCad that need some love. But I think that for the, the the schematic editor, you know, the primary tools, the schematic editor and the board editor and the two library editors, I, I think we've done a really pretty good job of kind of unifying the behavior between all the all those editors. And uh, I think that's probably the for me as as you know as as the project leader, I, I like to see that, you know, kind of uh, growth of the, you know, the maturity of the pro of the, the project itself. You know, new features will come over time, but it's nice to see that kind of cohesiveness that we've really lacked for a long time, um, and and we've been working slowly towards that over time. But I think version six is really a big step in that direction. So yeah, I I think that's as far as as far as uh you know forward facing uh for the user is is probably the thing that i'm most excited about okay so. that is uh that's really an a, an important point and i i couldn't agree more i've done uh i've had to go back to version five a few t a few times we do uh support questions for it and every time i go back i'm just i'm astounded by the uh, by, the shift in how much easier version six is to use, just for everyday tasks than than yeah. version five. So, absolutely, absolutely. Um, on the back end, uh, there is a question on what, where the uh, Git diff friendliness. So the, uh, the so how re how we handle revision controls. Um, has changed with the new schematic file format. Like, where does the where does the revision control friendliness come in in version six? 
Well, we've made quite a few. I mean, obviously the file format's completely different, but there were some changes in the parsers and the and the and the format. Well, specifically the formatter to um, try to maintain things in a, as orderly fashion as possible. So when you make changes to your schematic, the diffs won't be quite as severe as they used to be with the old legacy file format. Um, there's still a few places yet because internally we still have a few things to fix in version seven that will improve that. Um, in particular, uh, grounded, you know, power symbol um, annotation tends to change. Uh, I think some of that's been mitigated by the work John did, but there's probably mm -hmm. still some places where we can do some get diff improvements, but I think it's certainly a big step up from where we were with the old legacy formats. Right, right. So this is one of the questions that uh, came up is uh, that didn't quite get mentioned and uh, probably deserves to is our is our new Python API for uh, for version six. And this is one of the feature freeze exceptions that has been lagging. Uh, and that's that's uh, largely largely on me. Uh, but um, you, maybe you can address real quick. Uh, we are going to have a stable Python API in version six and that uh, people will be able to, that is disconnected yeah. then from the, uh, from the internals. Yeah, there, there's, there's several reasons that I didn't mention that for one, because it hasn't been committed yet. I, I, I <laughs> as, as an, if anybody who ever knows anything about running an open source project is, you know, I, I can only, I can't speak on everybody's behalf, you know? So until that gets committed and it's actually part of a code branch, I, I, or a part of the development branch of KiCad, I don't want to commit to anything that hasn't been done yet. So I know we're close and we're getting there. And the goal is to definitely have a stable API for version six. It's just at the time of the, uh, when I recorded the talk, Obviously that was a couple of weeks ago. It still hasn't been in, but I know we're getting close and I've been, I, I talk to the developing development team regularly to keep track of where we are with the, with the outstanding freeze exceptions. But I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to commit to, you know, I don't want to publicly say something in a talk and then it doesn't happen. And somebody goes, Hey, you said that. So it, it was to really try to avoid, um, you know, you know, overextending the project where we shouldn't probably do that. So, uh, but yes, I, there, the, it's looking like the API will be ready to go shortly here. And hopefully oh, it looks like we lost Seth, but um, yeah, it, it looks, it's going to happen. It's, and it's just a matter of when we get it uh, um, committed. So Oh, you're back. Okay. Seth. Okay. Yeah. No, I um, I was just testing. We don't have the follow me uh, turned on right now, which uh, normally seems to focus on the speaker. This one seems to be focusing on me, even That's though I'm right. not the one talking. Uh, so, uh, but let's see. We we have a, a, a couple more really good questions. So, for example, uh, uh, Jay Hond was wondering how risky is it to start using CCAD version six development right now to test out all these uh, awesome new features? Well, it, it, except for the few exceptions, um, it, the feature set's frozen. So, uh, and that includes the file formats. So you're not going to see, unless there's a bug in any of the file formatting, you're not gonna see any file format changes between now and V6 release. So if you're worried about, you know, compatibility issues, that I think version six is in a pretty stable place right now. Um, there are a few quirks and, and niggling issues, but there's not a lot of real major data loss problems. I think we've got most everything under control. Um, in general, if um, I don't know if you're familiar with how KiCad development works, we really do try to do a good job, even during the next version development of keeping KiCad as usable as possible because we want our user base. We have quite a large user base who actually run nightly builds 
on a regular basis, which actually helps out a lot with um, helping KeyCAD move forward quickly as we, you know, track down any bugs and whatnot, um, give us, and they give us feedback to improve. So I think you're pretty safe using version six um, for regular development. Now, if you have an existing project or something that you got to get done tomorrow, you might want to hold off. But I think for if you're starting a new design and you're looking for to take it or and you want to like to take advantage of the new features, like say you have a, a, a situation where you won't actually want to use a curve trace, then, you know, then you I think you're you should go ahead and use version six for a new new designs. Right. Um, I know that we have uh, we have a number of corporate customers who are actually uh, moved, have moved on to version six and are uh, actively developing. They're looking, they're looking at products that are six months, a year, two years out, and they've, they've moved their designs over to version six to make sure that they have that continuity uh, going, uh, going through and, and really access to uh, access to really all, all of the features that, that you mentioned in in your talk, so the, uh, the there are a few other a aspects here. I think maybe we have time for one more uh, one more question. Um, when you are talking about version seven features, things like uh, the database driven atomic uh, atomic libraries, um, you're you're really talking about uh, full specification, right? The, the, so the can you uh, talk a little bit more about uh, what that means for uh, from a design perspective? Well, from a design perspective, there's <clears throat> there's there's always there's two schools of thought on how you create symbols. Generally, there's the generic symbol. You say, like, take a resistor, right? You, you don't want to define a specific part number because it has to have a, a specific footprint and all the um, complete information manufacturer, maybe you might have a vendor part number. Um, so there's the generic concept of a generic symbol. Then there's what we call atomic symbols. Another way to think of them are fully defined symbols. In other words, a fully defined symbol might be a, a specific vendor part number or manufacturer part number, the manufacturer's um, name, the vendor part number, maybe a vendor name, you might have uh, you have a specific footprint that goes with that, maybe even a custom footprint that goes with that resistor or part. Then you might have a specific 3D model specifically for that part. So an atomic symbol is completely defined and it, it literally defines a single part number. So if you think in terms of resistors, there's probably tens of millions of resistor, individual resistor part numbers. Um, so there's there's different schools of thought so a fully defined part number would be used like in somebody's MRP ordering system uh, for, for like a company that you might import into a uh, data, the corporate database for, you know, material resource planning. And, and gener obviously generic symbols are something you can't use for that. So it's kind of the, that's really right. what defines the difference. So, so databases make sense for atomic libraries just for that reason. You know, because they have use outside of KeyCAD proper, and and they are useful for sure. for corporate other corporate reasons for lots of uh, uh, you know primarily, like I said, big MRP mm -hmm. systems. Well, uh, all right. Well, it looks like we are almost out of time.